welcome everybody and thank you for joining us. This is the National Adoption Competency Mental Health Training Initiative or NTI Transfer of Learning Tuesdays. Today's webinar is applying key concepts and tools um, looking at our modules on attachment and loss and grief. I'm Lisa Maynard. I'm an implementation specialist for NTI and the Center for Adoption Support and Education. Um, my co-host today was going to be Edna Davis-Brown. Unfortunately, she's feeling a little bit under the weather, so she's sitting in the background and she's going to do some monitoring of the chat box for us, but um, I'm going to um, be happy to take over for her um, today. Uh, my co-presenters, our guest presenters today, are Joyce Reese Bay, Kimberly Bonham, and Melanie Meyer, and they're going to tell you a little bit about themselves coming up. So before um, we take a look at the chat box, if you, I mean at the agenda, if you haven't already, just drop into the chat box your name, um, your role and agency if you're a part of an agency, and one thing that brings you joy. Just a little icebreaker to get us going. Second on the nature and joy. Cool. Yeah, being in nature is so wonderful, isn't it? Um, I'm looking out gardening. I love gardening. I'm looking out my window right now and the sun is shining and the flowers are growing and it feels really, really good. All righty. So let's, um, let's do this poll. What areas of the United States do you reside in or work in or maybe both? I live in upstate New York and I work, well, actually as an implementation specialist, I work all over the country traveling to all the states, tribes, and territories that are under my purview. So tell us where you are. And you should see a poll up in front of you. I'll give you another minute or so. <clears throat> And then Gary, if you could share the results. There we go. So, wow, 35% of you are from the Midwest, Southeast, the Northeast, and the West. Great. Well, thank you so much for participating. Great to have you all here. So today we're gonna cover um, a couple of different things. We're gonna do a brief overview of NTI our webinar objectives are to help you understand the key concepts presented in the modules on attachment and loss and grief. Hopefully you'll gain a deeper understanding of these issues to better meet the mental health needs of children and youth in foster care, adoption, and guardianship care, and show the integration of knowledge and skills emphasized in each of these modules into day-to-day -day practice. And our, our guest presenters are, are gonna be um, really telling you how they did that so you can see firsthand. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about NTI access and implementation options if you haven't already done that in your agency or in your location and answer questions um, as, they come, as they come up at the end, okay? Okay, one more poll to tell us who you are. What is your current role? And it may be several. You might be a member of the Adoption Constellation, an administrator, supervisor, caseworker or case manager, a therapist or social worker, or something altogether different. So choose um, your role and you could choose more than one. So I'll give you a minute to answer the question there, answer that poll. I'm glad to see we've got social workers, guardian ad litems, even interns, um, volunteers. Really excited to see the, the great range of participants we have today. So Gary, what do we have here? So 43% of you are social workers. 25% uh, case managers, therapists, administrators, 12% members of the Adoption Constellation. And I always like to see that. Um, I myself am an adoptive parent and I'm married to an adoptee. 
who tells me I collect adoptees. Um, so really gives a, um, a personal perspective on the work we're doing. Okay, thank you very much for participating. Appreciate that. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Center for Adoption Support and Education. It was created in 1998 to provide post-adoption counseling and educational services to families in Maryland, Northern Virginia, and Washington, DC. CASE is a nonprofit, private organization envisioning that everyone touched by foster care and adoption has access to adoption competence support as they navigate through the lifelong journey of adoption. The National Adoption Competency Mental Health Training Initiative builds on the foundation that CASE had built in the core values over the years. To learn more about CASE's um, mission, values, strategic partners, and so on, you can visit our website at adoptionsupport.org. And I think Gary might drop that in the chat box for us, or maybe perhaps Dawn. Okay. Through our work, we've seen a need for change in how we address the mental health needs of children. The Children's Bureau grant was an opportunity to help us address these needs. I've worked in this field for more than 30 years uh, since adopting my children. And um, adoption competency has, for me, been by far the biggest, um, biggest need that I've seen in this work. So NTI is a free web-based training that helps better address the mental health needs of children and youth and foster adoptive and guardianship families. We launched um, nationally in 2020 and NTI provides tools and free resources to enhance casework and clinical practice, assessment and therapeutic strategies for mental health professionals, and creates a shared language for both child welfare professionals and mental health professionals to foster greater collaboration between the two. And we have found this to be um, especially important in our work. Through the NTI web-based trainings, CASE supports a common core of mental health and adoption learning that will enhance the stability and ability of child welfare and mental health professionals to speak that shared language and better serve families. NTI gives mental health and child welfare professionals the skills, tools, knowledge, and strategies to provide me competent mental health services to children, youth, and families. We work to support this collaboration between child welfare and mental health to improve permanency. A comprehensive list of our core competencies is available on our website. The American Academy of Pediatrics identifies mental health and behavioral health as the greatest unmet need of children, youth, and families in this population. The, uh, the Academy notes that two to 14, uh, children aged two to 14 years identified nearly 50% with clinically significant mental health problems. And the American Academy of Pediatrics estimates that up to 80% of children and adolescents enter care, enter care with significant mental health compared to approximately 18 to 22% of the general population. And when we had started this work several years ago, it's about six or seven years ago now, this number was about 46%. And I, we did the, um, you know, we did the, the search to see how this has changed and it's up to 80% now. So clearly it's um, a need that's really important to be addressed. NTI consists of two trainings, the child welfare curriculum and a mental health curriculum. The child welfare is about 20 hours with an additional five hours for supervisor specific lessons with a downloadable supervisor coaching and activity guide. It includes eight modules focused on casework practice. And, um, and there are 20 uh, CEUs, NASW approved CEUs for the child welfare curriculum, 25 for the supervisor uh, curriculum. The, the very much aligned mental health curriculum offers 10 modules. It's the two, the eight original modules in the child welfare curriculum with two additional modules that focus on needs assessment, 
treatment strategies through an adoption lens. It provides 12 evidence-based treatment interventions, not trainings, but gives you information and resources to learn more about those, and um, is much more clinically focused. This has 25 NASW approved CEUs. Again, they're web-based, self-paced, and free, like really, really free. We get the question all the time. NTI's uh, competencies, so these are the basically the modules that are included, understanding children's mental health challenges, loss and grief, the impact of trauma, building strong attachments. So loss and grief and attachments are what we're gonna look at today. Positive identity formation, the impact of race, culture, and diversity, and providing post-adoption supports. That's all included in the child welfare. And these are all included in the mental health training as well. In addition, <clears throat> a tr uh, assessment and treatment planning and therapeutic parenting strategies. There's a comprehensive list of our competencies, the modules, the learning objectives. You can find all kinds of information here at adoptionsupport.org backslash NTI. So we're gonna look at strategies and evidence-informed therapies embedded in NTI trainings to help professionals and parents support grieving children to mitigate loss and to help children, youth, and families uncover hope and healing. Loss and grief play a central role in families formed through adoption and guardianship and have a significant impact on the mental health of children. Ambiguous and unresolved losses are often hiding underneath a brave or bold exterior presenting as manipulative or obstinate defiant behavior. And, and you probably get these questions and these comments from foster and adoptive parents. This kid is so manipulative. So, you know, we're trying to get underneath to what is driving the behavior and not just looking at um, punishing or consequencing behaviors, but going underneath to find out what's at the core, what's at the root of that. So the NTI modules, it's module five in the child welfare training and module four in the mental health training. Lots and lots of tools and resources built into these modules. Ambiguous loss is a big part of this so that um, it's defined as when a person is physically present but psychologically unavailable as a parent with um, mental health issues or substance abuse, perhaps. And it's also defined as when a person is physically absent but psychologically present, as any child who's been separated from their birth family without contact, um, without any ability to be in contact with them, or perhaps when uh, the child um, has a loss through a death. Loss is an inherent part of life. We all experience multiple losses as we grow up and obviously through our adulthood, right? Because loss is a common experience, people usually expect and receive acknowledgement and support in their grieving. When we have a parent or a loved one die, there's, there's a celebration of sorts. There's a ritual of sorts that happens. And this is sort of a normal uh, process in our culture. This really doesn't happen much for children um, and families who are um, touched by adoption, foster care, and guardianship. We tend to minimize or discount our children's losses. After all, we've rescued them from hard places, the hard places of abuse and neglect where most of our kids come from, and we keep them safe and loved. So they really shouldn't be experiencing loss. We've, we've taken care of that. We've taken them in to love them and nurture them but they do in fact experience loss. Unresolved loss is extremely hard, right? Because of the ambiguity, there's often hope of re reconciliation and a feeling of being in limbo. How do I get back to my family? When they have that hope, when they have that maybe unrealistic expectation it's really hard to grieve and it's really hard to help a child to connect with a new family. 
that unresolved grief can interfere with forming new attachments and making positive adjustments in those new relationships. Whether or not there is contact with the birth family, we need to help children by clarifying relationships to work toward resolving the ambivalence and to help them grieve. Again, whether or not there is contact with the original family. The symptoms of, PTS, of PTSD often are mistaken, are often mistaken for ambiguous loss. So many of our kids are diagnosed with PTSD when they're really just kind of stuck in that loss process. According to Pauline Boss, the greater the ambiguity surrounding one's loss, the more difficult it is to master and the greater one's depression, anxiety, and family conflict when they're not able to um, really do the grieving that is required. So consider what that means for a child who's removed from their birth family who's lost their family. So um, some of those issues might be difficulty with transitions, difficulty making decisions, feeling overwhelmed, trouble coping with other losses. So loss of a school or a friendship or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, feeling stuck, having increased anxiety or depression or feelings of helplessness and hopelessness or feelings of guilt. A lot of our kids feel guilty because they feel like they've made this happen. They've caused the loss. Our module three is on attachment, promoting secure attachments. And really um, at the core, relationships and experiences matter. And attunement and parents' ability to understand and empathize with their children's needs. Attachment and healing takes place in relationship. Bruce Perry, Dan Siegel, um, they've done a lot of work on this. I'm sure you've heard this before. In NTI's training, we talk a lot about reframing the behavior, can't versus won't behavior. So really looking at maybe they're not able to do this yet because they're stuck in that cycle of um, insecurity uh, anxiety, depression, they haven't really fully grieved yet, those kinds of things. The, the um, module on attachment talks about these key concepts, the importance of adoption competency, really, really important attachments can be built and rebuilt, and understanding what motivates behavior. Again, can't versus won't behaviors. And here are some um, tools that are included in the module. Again, lots and lots of resources to pull from in that. Okay, so I'm gonna move on now to our guest presenters. Joyce Reese Bay has direct practice experience in extensive, intensive home-based treatment, maternal health programs, and child welfare. Joyce worked in child protective services for six years before transitioning to adoption in June of 2020. She is currently the adoption social worker for the Arlington Department of Human Services, Child and Family Services Division. Kimberly Bonham has her professional career working nearly three decades with homeless children and families in Washington, DC. In 1997, she was recognized by the FBI and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children as an advocate for child safety by locating a missing child Kimberly has worked extensively with foster kinship and adoptive parents as a frontline worker and as a supervisor for about 19 years in, a support, uh, in support of a safe, nurturing environments and permanence for children in Arlington County, Virginia. For the last eight years, Kimberly has been the supervisor for the Foster Family and Adoption Services team at Arlington's Department of Human Services, Child and Family Services. And then Melanie Meyer, has worked 33 years in Washington State as a social worker, supervisor, program manager, and administrator. She is passionate about the training offered through NTI and was a state lead for its implementation in Washington State. Melanie and the state of Washington were one of our pilots, and so we're really thrilled to have um, Melanie here today. We were really successful in Washington thanks to her efforts. In addition to her work in Washington, Melanie has worked as a social worker in Georgia, Vermont, and with the military in Alaska. 
So Kimberly and Joyce will start us off. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, as Lisa shared, I work for Arlington County Child and Family Services in Northern Virginia, and I supervise a small team um, known as the Foster Family and Adoption Services Team, which is a team within the Child Welfare Bureau in Arlington County, where our child welfare services are state run yet locally administered. About two years ago, NTI staff Edna Davis Brown visited us in Arlington and spoke to our foster care and adoption teams about the NTI training to support us in advancing our practice and increasing successful outcomes. And although the training, NTI training has not yet been adopted by our state or our division as a whole, I have been supported by my bureau and division chiefs to have the NTI training be mandatory for any new members of my team and included in the work plan for any team member. Um, and so as the new worker, the new adoption worker, um, I joined Arlington County a year ago. So part of my orientation to the position was to take the NTI training. So while I was not new to child welfare, adoption was in a sense new territory for me. So it was important for me to have an understanding of what adoption competence is and to work towards that. And so we are implementing NTI training, um, as Joyce mentioned, as a part of any new workers learning plan um, in, in, with the foster family and adoption services team. And I've been strongly encouraging and supporting existing team members to take the training to increase their knowledge, their skill, and their ability to be responsive to the mental health challenges that impact children who have experienced abuse and neglect. In addition, I use my opportunities in supervisors meetings that include both of our bureaus, both the child welfare and behavioral health to discuss the benefits of adoption competent staff, the NTI trainings and its relevance to all of child welfare and behavioral health as appropriate. Next slide. There were four key concepts from the attachment module um, as well as the loss and grief modules that we believe had the greatest impact. Strategies for working with parents, attachment-based casework, the impact of ambiguous and unresolved loss, developmental manifestation of grief and loss. With the strategies uh, for working with parents, um, the coaching can provide parents tools to help children experience and feel safety. Also, helping parents to identify their own attachment style to determine if it matches their child's or provides insight on their child's attachment style. With attachment-based casework, understanding the importance of helping children retain their attachment figure relationships, and of course, minimize moves is highlighted Tools such as the exercise, whose job was it, can help a worker understand the child's attachments and subsequently support the adoptive parents to understand those attachments. So another concept, sorry, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> um, another concept that has been very impactful has been the impact of ambiguous and unresolved loss. Um, the NTI training really helped me to develop the language to have difficult conversations with parents about loss, um, especially around their own loss history and its impact on their parenting. I found that for some parents, our conversations may have been the first or really only one of the few times that they've had the space to really process their loss. Uh, for example, one adoptive family I worked with we were able to have several conversations about their grief and loss around missing the first year of their child's life. And from those conversations, I was then able to provide support to the parents and also help them understand what losses their child has experienced. And then lastly, in terms of the developmental manifestation of grief and loss, 
Uh, with this, it has really been about helping families understand their child's grief and loss and what that looks like throughout the lifespan. Uh, for example, sharing with parents that even infants experience loss and providing support and education about how a child cannot have too many healthy attachments and why maintaining those relationships are so important. Next slide. So one very important foundational knowledge piece for us from NTI were the 14 guiding principles of adoption. In our day-to-day -day practice, we created adoption preparedness plans for our pre-adoptive families. In order for us to have discussions with families, we needed, of course, to know and understand the principles ourselves. So Joyce developed the wonderful idea of creating the flyer seen here on this slide. We provide this flyer to our pre-adoptive families so that they have an understanding of the guiding principles and the work we'll be doing together. The plans support conversations about several of the, uh, the guiding principles, such as connections matter, loss is at the heart of every adoption and should not be ignored, healing from trauma, loss, and insecure attachments occurs in the context of a trusting family relationship, race, ethnicity, culture, class, and sexual orientation, and gender identity. Um, and on its impact on identity formation. These are just a few, um, but what this does um, for us is begin the relationship with our uh, pre-adoptive families um, and puts in writing the connection between the adoption principles and their child's um, family history and their needs. Next slide. So the adoption preparedness plan was really created to help us have very purposeful conversations with families about their children's needs within the context of some of the guiding principles of adoption that are outlined within the NCI training. So what you see on this slide is the template that we use for the adoption preparedness plan. So as Ken stated earlier, we incorporated seven of the guiding principles from the NCI training. And so for each principle, we start with the goal and the reason for need. Um, we created a standardized goal for each principle, which is essentially what we want the family to learn or achieve at the end of the six months. The reason for the need is specific to each child in the adoptive family. Uh, for example, with the guiding principle of unresolved parental grief impacts parenting, we might include a statement that speaks to the child's losses and even the parent's own losses if we have assessed that there is unresolved grief that could potentially impact their future parenting. So in the family tasks in the agency support section, we worked with the family to identify tasks and supports that will help them meet the goal. So this can include activities such as reading an article, watching a video about grief and loss, and then discussing it during a home visit or having them participate in a foster or adoptive parent support group. And so as the tasks are completed, we'll mark it on the plan and then we can add comments about what the family has learned. Next slide. So there are some challenges and several successes to integrating the NTI training um, into our system here in Arlington. Um, one um, has been for um, really helping team members to see the value for them, especially if they've been working in the field for a while. And because, as I mentioned, I supervise a small team um, and it's a team where every member's uh, responsibilities and duties are different. I do feel the need to point out how the training will be of benefit to them in their role. I believe that everyone can benefit from new skills to help children heal. If you work in child welfare in any capacity, you have a role in ensuring children heal from the foster parent recruiter to the post adoption worker. Um, other challenges have been um, making time. Um, what I find is that um, I have conversations during supervision with team members who have not started um, or have started but not finished the NTI training to find the time to take the training, encouraging them to use uh, the time that perhaps they would have been in a meeting when a meeting has been canceled to use that time to take NTI 
and to also uh, include it on their calendar and schedule as a part of their weekly um, responsibilities. So as I mentioned previously, as the new adoption uh, social worker, I feel that I've benefited greatly from taking this training. Um, I've really learned that grief and loss is greatly embedded in adoption. Um, and it's so important for professionals who are working with families to be adoption confident. I think oftentimes adoption is presented as this happy and beautiful thing. And I know that even for myself, I came in with a sort of rosy picture of adoption. And while adoption is beautiful and provides permanency for children, it exists alongside grief and loss and trauma. And so taking the NTI training really helped me gain a different perspective and balance out the beauty and the loss that's inherent in adoption. Next slide. So there have been some challenges with integrating the NCI principles. Um, one challenge has been that the push to finalize adoptions and meet state timelines doesn't always match up with the time that's needed for adoption preparedness. Um, because we're working with families that are adopting through foster care, when cases come to our unit, it's typically shortly after termination of parental rights. Um, the treatment team, so GAL, county attorneys, CASA, et cetera, and even the foster parents are oftentimes very eager to get the adoption finalized to ensure permanency for the child. And while we, of course, strive for this as well, we always try to stress the importance of making time for adoption preparedness because it really does benefit families in the long run. Um, another challenge has been carving out time to discuss the NTI principles and work on adoption preparedness during home visits. So because there are often administrative tasks that need to be addressed, along with obtaining updates about how the child is doing in the home, it's sometimes difficult to set aside that time just for adoption preparedness. And so we've tried to remedy this by doing two monthly visits with families when it's possible. So one visit focused on administrative tasks, updates on the child, and then a separate visit that's focused solely on the adoption preparedness task. Um, and then a final challenge has been balancing working with pre-adoptive parents who are not necessarily clients, but we need to work with them in a different way than before. So foster parents are normally used to the home visits focusing on the children. So how are they functioning in the home, talking through concerns or needs, but with adoption preparedness, there is a bit of a shift to working with them in a more direct way. And so we try to frame this as a way to provide support to the family as they move into their new role as adoptive parents. And we found that for the most part, families are pretty receptive to this. And successes. Um, re reviewing the NTI, uh, the guiding principles of adoption uh, with families um, gives them space, uh, as Joyce had mentioned previously, to process their grief and loss. Um, gives us space to talk about the importance of attachment and uh, to be very specific about the child they are adopting. Being adoption, adoption competent is helping us to prepare uh, families better for adoption. Um, also, workers gain tools to help parents talk to their children about adoption. The supervisor's coaching guide is extremely beneficial and can help a worker process, um, help you, uh, if you're a supervisor, help your team member process their own feelings and biases when working with families and uh, gain an understanding about the child's attachment, as I had mentioned previously, with um, really great exercises like the whose job was it exercise. So there are a few things we've found to be helpful as we've integrated NTI. Um, so the first thing is supervisors um, should try to allot time during the workday for staff to take the NTI training. So when I started with Arlington, Kim did a really great job with balancing when I received new cases so that I had time to dedicate to the NTI training. By the time I finished the training and started to get a full caseload, I really felt prepared to work with the families so I had the knowledge, the tools to really educate families on the importance of the NTI principles and really help support them in their adoption journey. 
And during a, a recent staff meeting, um, again, using the coaching's guide, I um, used the adapted child's journey through placement chart, um, which outlined claiming behaviors, initiating positive interactions, um, as a way to um, encourage us to discuss caseloads and to discuss the importance of attachment. And again, um, I can't say enough how uh, great that supervisor's coaching guide is. And then um, just lastly, oh, sorry, <laughs> for um, the NTI training, it really is, um, has an incredible amount of resources. So um, our word of wisdom is as you go through the modules, save the resources that are referenced in the training so that you can utilize them later during your conversations with children and parents. Um, so we created an electronic library of sorts with the different resources. And as we're working with families, if there is something that comes up that we feel will be beneficial, we can share that information with them. Um, and then just as a final plug for the NTI training, um, it is intensive, but it's absolutely worth it. It's so valuable, um, not only for the families that you serve, but also for your own professional development. So definitely encourage you all to take the NTI training. Thank you so much, Kim and Joyce. Um, really appreciate your excellent presentation here. Um, it, NTI is extensive, as you as you said, and it takes a lot of time. But I'm glad that you guys found it worth it. And um, and that's pretty much the feedback we're getting from all across the United States. So thank you very much. And now we are going to move on to Melanie. Hi, I'm Melanie Meyer and I'm currently the Administrator for Adoption Programs in Washington State. I'm excited to be able to present um, information on how we implemented um, post-pilot um, NTI in Washington State. I was lucky enough, as um, Lisa said earlier, to be the state lead for this pilot. And it was a great opportunity to use this curriculum to develop with our social workers and with our um, mental health community. Next slide, please. So why were we so interested in NTI? In 2013, we went through the process of having a um, performance audit. That performance audit was pretty um, informative. So what, was, what we did was we got responses from about 735 families. In Washington State, we have 18,000 children in our post-adoption program and about 10,000 families. And we heard from 735 families, which is a really good response to a survey. And some of the things that those families told us were they described times when they had a problems um, finding a provider who understood adoption issues. They had therapists telling them that their child had issues and should probably go back into foster care. They had social workers who didn't fully understand the situations that they were dealing with, with their children's behaviors and their impact. And they had a need just to know better how to parent their children, how to handle the situations that they were running into on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, families would talk to our post-adoption staff and our adoption staff and say, these children are having meltdowns. I don't understand what's going on. They'll be fine and suddenly they're just crying. Um, they didn't understand the impacts of those ACE, those you know, adverse childhood experiences, their exposure to pre-verbal trauma. And so having a way to give voice to those parents on the situations that their children was living with on a day-to-day -day basis was really important. Next slide, please. So I was fortunate enough to go to a, a, a post-adoption conference in Tennessee and heard Debbie Riley talk about TAC, which is the adoption competency training. And I was all excited. Well, they were already in the midst of doing that training. But they did say that they had this training coming up that was going to be available. And I said, well, I'm sure Washington State would be interested. And so when the information came out about the pilot site, we jumped on it and were really eager to be a part of that pilot. And sometimes you do things that just work out. And so we were approved for the pilot and some of our very first meetings, we met with this incredible group of people 
to figure out how are we going to present NTI to our families? How are we going to be able to get the most for our community, the most for our parents, the most for our staff? And so we brought together a group of people. We brought together our adoption workers, the people who do adoptions every day. We brought together our post-adoption staff. So those are the people who work with the families once they've adopted, they work with the parents, they work with the children, they work with the providers, our home um, study licensors, the people who were looking at the families and determining, you know, are they appropriate for adoption? Um, what kinds of supports will they need? And then we brought in our community partners. So we brought in our Northwest Resource Associates. That is the agency that handles our Washington Adoption Resource Exchange. They post our kids. They maintain our website. They provide a lot of training to our staff. We brought in Olive Crest, who was a child placing agency, our healthcare authority and our managed care providers, therapists in the community um, that worked with adopted families and then people who were contracted. And then we just did a massive spread out um, of invitations to anybody and everybody who work with children who would want and need this training. And then we also collaborated with the Alliance for Child Welfare Excellence, which is our statewide training for, um, program through the University of Washington that trains our social workers, our caregivers, and, and many of our agency staff. And so together, we just had this incredible team. Sometimes you put your teams together and you don't realize how fortunate you are by who has chosen to participate. I look back now on who all sat around that table with us and realize how lucky we are to have those people participate together as we went through NTI. Next slide, please. And one of the reasons the importance of that team was why, you know, the importance was so great was we had cross-system collaboration. We had people who understood the, the families who were adopting. We had people who understood the needs of children who were being adopted from foster care, understood their grief, understood their loss, understood the situation that had happened to them and what their, their life had been. They understood the, the consequences of multiple placements of not being able to be in your family of origin, understanding the, the loss and grief and situations that children do deal with on a daily basis. Um, they were the evaluators again of placements. They understood what families had been going through. They understood their backgrounds. Um, and then, you know, we were very fortunate that we had our medical community involved with us. In Washington State, we have a process for our medical providers that includes medical, mental, and behavioral health. So it's all incorporated under one provider. And so being able to train that, you know, that medical provider into understanding, you know, the NTI concepts, the, the grief and loss that children experience, um, the importance of attachment, the questions that families would have, it really has made a great difference in that program's interaction with our children and families. So we were just, you know, I, I'm very happy that we had the people sitting around the table with us as we implemented this process. Um, next slide, please. So I'm gonna explain this slide a little bit so that you're not thinking, oh wow, only 4% of the people understood grief and loss when they um, took the pretest. In order to be given, um, to have been passed in the pretest, you had to have 75% um, of the correct scores. So we had 4% of the people who were providing, who, who took the pretest that only 4% of those were able to pass it a 75% level in the area of grief and loss, the impact of grief and loss. 24% um, were able to address the information with attachment and bonding. But when we look at our supervisory staff, again, we go back to that ability to hit 75% of the information. 10% of our, our supervisors needed that 
information and had um, that breadth of knowledge that was needed for grief and loss or for 24% of the um, supervisors with attachment and bonding. I find it interesting that we're doing a presentation specifically focusing on grief and loss and attachment. And I look at where the scores were. I look at where those pre-test scores were and I look at where those post-test scores were. And I'm so excited to be able to see the growth that happened because the it was the social workers who understood and learned and talk about on a day-to-day -day basis, the impact this training has had on their practice. Understanding what happens to a child when they are going through multiple placements, understanding that loss of a permanent family, that importance of helping a family embrace the child where they are and helping them to attach to that new family and become a part of that new family. So the training was incredible. Um, again, like Kim and Joyce mentioned earlier, that supervisor training packet for the supervisors who are working with their staff as they're going through the child welfare pieces is so important. The resources, I can't speak highly enough. Um, the information that's given to providers and given to staff. I mean, we used it to develop a, a curriculum, which I'll discuss later. It was an incredible, you know, they're just so helpful and such a needed piece. So, um, okay, let's go to the next slide. So next we're looking at the impact of the training on our, our um, mental health community. So I, this is really, okay, so um, when you're looking at attachment and bonding with adoption and guardianship, in our community uh, providers who work day on a daily basis with our children, the fact that 40%, almost 40 and a half percent of that population was not able to, to be at that 75% level. So being able to move forward and learn about the importance of attachment and bonding with adoption and guardianship was very important. Um, that also, you know, understanding the importance of race, ethnicity, culture, class, um, diversity impact on adoptions and guardianships and helping people learn that as well as understanding the identity formation in adoption and guardianship. Those pieces that were learned by our, our treatment community was important as well. I have therapists who continually call and say, when are you going to be back on? When can we get the training? We're currently sending them through case for the training, but we were, you know, um, our goal was to have it on site so that we would be able to send them through our, our Washington um, learning management system. But they talk about how going through this training changed their practice. It changed how they work with families. It changed how they work with children. It helped them to help those children learn who they were and understand where their history was what happened to them in the past, what caused the difficulties that brought them into care to help them deal with the loss and to the grief and to process that information. Okay, can we move next slide, please? So what did we learn? We learned so much. Um, in fact, we learned so much that we realized we can't just keep this information with the workers and the child welfare community and our community partners. We needed to be able to share this information with our families. Well, we understood that with the pilot, we weren't able to use the same slides and the same training for foster families and caregivers but we use those incredible resources that are available through NTI and we developed a curriculum. Um, the curriculum was titled The Effects of Trauma and Loss on Adoption. So we were able to sit together with these incredible community that we had developed for this pilot, this group of people who sat around the table with us. And as um, word of mouth went around, um, we developed this training and it identified the needs of children that were adopted from foster care. 
What are some of the situations that they run into? What are the issues that need to be addressed? Who are these children? What do they need? Um, we talked about child, you know, adverse childhood experiences, the various types of attachment, how to improve the attachment, exercises for parents and children to do together to improve um, their relationship and to, to, to start building a relationship as a parent and a child. We helped um, um, the parents understand that adoption, that guardianship and removal from any of the families of origin involves loss. How to help that child put words to the loss and deal with what happened to them, understand what their history was, how to move forward. We had the ability to talk with our social workers, our therapists and our caregivers so that we now have a level playing field so that social workers and caregivers and therapists have the same language. They can talk about um, the issues that their child has. They can talk about their grief. They can talk about the loss. They can talk about the attachment needs. We can talk about some of those things that the parents voiced earlier in our discussion on those meltdowns that they didn't understand. Why their adopted child did not appreciate <laughs> and enjoy Christmas and a birthday party. And some of those, some of those times when you would think, wow, but it would, it should be really good. You know, we have all the family here, we have all the friends here and it's all for them. And how difficult sometimes those situations are for youth who have grown up in, in homes where maybe those special occasions were fraught with drug abuse or domestic violence or physical abuse. And so it helped families understand what the reactions of their child may be. We um, talked about and are trained into the effects of loss across generations and cultures. Um, we developed information on attachment using the, the multiple resources and we helped address the challenges that families have on a day-to-day -day basis. We work to create, help the families learn about creating a healing environment and how to employ the skills that they learned in therapy with their children, how to learn those play techniques. And um, so it was just a wonderful opportunity by using the information that we learned with NTI, our incredible team who moved forward as we move forward in the, the pilot to um, create a training that will be really helpful for families. Next slide, please. What else happened? This is kind of magical what happened in Washington State and I'm so excited about where we're going to be able to move forward. Um, we have a counseling provider that was trained their whole entire staff to enter it TI. In order to work at that counseling office, you have to take the NTI training. Um, she brought in TheraPlay. She has her staff trained to the TheraPlay model, which is a model, an evidence-based model that's discussed in the training. Um, we had one agency that developed a whole entire mechanism to work with adopted children and families. They do a lot of work with post-adoption. They coach the family on a um, you know, attachment-centered models. They have support groups. They have special sessions specifically with the adopted population to help them um, using the information that they learned in NTI. We, oops. Sorry. Um, we also have a child, um, we increased our knowledge of the type of interventions so that we now have staff who, when they'll think of bringing a training to Washington State or bringing a training for their the care providers, they'll sit and think of those evidence-based practices that they were taught about during their NTI training. So we have an increased knowledge and in, increased ability to move forward when we develop a training so that we talk about 
you know, the trauma issues, the loss and attachment issues. And we now are looking at bringing TBRI to Washington State and having training through the 357 process. The staff and development of training for our whole entire state now is happening with an NTI focus because of the information that's been learned through this NTI training. And um, the nicest thing is as we were preparing for this presentation, we are, were in the testing phase of bringing the NTI module to our learning management system. And this has been a long, an ongoing process that's taken a, a while to happen. But last Thursday, as we were preparing for this um, presentation today, we got word we now are moving forward and NTI will be on Washington State's learning management system. But not just for our child welfare piece. Um, next slide, please. Um, we, we had um, a lot of challenges. Um, I agree with Joyce and Kim when they talked about some of the challenges of the length of time it takes to take the training. Um, that it is long, but it is worth it. But we also had some other challenges through our pilot. We had a whole entire agency change. We were with one department under the state, um, and then we became a whole new department. We had whole new leadership changed and a brand new learning management system, but we persevered and we continued working and we realized how important what NTI was for the families and for the staff and for the community in Washington State. And so we, we kept to it. And so now we're gonna have um, NTI on our learning management system. And it's important not just to be patient and to persevere, but take advantage of opportunities. So um, I know many of you who work in the adoption community are aware of the adoption call to action and how with that adoption call to action, we brought people from different, we brought people from the courts, we brought people from um, the adoption community um, and staff together to talk about what we can do to help promote adoptions. Well, one of the people that was sitting around the table to the adoption call to action was someone from our healthcare authority. And so where initially we had focused on our managed care organization, our um, healthcare authority person who participated in that adoption call to action wanted to have this training for their staff because they have therapists that work in the community. So not only will LMS in Washington State be for those children, I mean those staff in child welfare, it will also be for um, our DSHS partners, which are the people who run our um, community our CLIP facility, which is um, community level inpatient placement. And I know that's not what the exact, sorry, I forget what the actual term is, but for our children who are placed in out of home care for mental health services, we will have it for the people who work with young pregnant moms. So if one of those moms had been adopted and they're going back in and needing some kind of assistance as an adult with their own children, they've got this availability to be able to take this training. Um, we have it for our medical community. We have it for DSHS and for DCYF. So we've made it a broader um, ability and not just for our child welfare population, but for other parts of the state who can benefit from this training. We also have, we took advantage of COVID. I know most people are saying, how would COVID make a difference? While we were sitting around the table trying to figure out how we bring NTI to our learning management system. So Lisa was on the call. Um, our contracts manager, our statewide um, DCYF contracts manager was sitting at the table and he said, you know, I know you talk about bringing this for our, your um, medical community and for the greater uh, mental health, the DSHS community. My wife actually works with um, 
putting things on the statewide learning management system. So because of COVID and our Zoom calls and people working from home, we were able to have a meeting that just wasn't within our department, but was also the statewide person who worked hand in hand with us to help make sure that we could move forward with our um, NTI on a, on a broader scale, not just with the Department of Children, Youth and Families. And then finally, word of mouth. Um, once this training starts, the information goes out, people realize just how great this is, um, how much they've learned, how it changes the practice, how it will impact the way they move forward with adoption. So we've been very, very fortunate to um, be a part of NTI. We took advantage of every opportunity and we were patient. And now, um, I think I, actually today, um, NTI is up on our learning management system available for Washington State. I, I advise anyone who hasn't accepted it in their state to do so, anyone who hasn't taken the training to do so, it impacts practice, it impacts families, it, impact, and it impacts your state. And it has been an incredible opportunity um, to bring this to Washington State. And so thank you. Holy cow. Now y'all know why we have guest presenters. Um, Thank you so much, Kimberly, Joyce, Melanie. Um, I, you said it all. Uh, I, I wanna call out a couple of things that you all mentioned, and I think we're, we're probably getting some questions on these things. Um, the Adoption Preparedness Plan, what a fabulous idea, what a great resource. Um, Melanie, that you in, in Washington State created a curriculum for adoptive and foster parents through through the resources in NTI, built into NTI. Really excited to hear the ways in which NTI has impacted your day-to-day -day practice and how you, um, how you present to, um, to folks across your state. So really, really exciting work that you all are doing and I so, we so appreciate it. Um, I think um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more just Review NTI, um, the program, free web-based self-paced training, supports children to heal from trauma and loss, provides um, resources to help parents um, with the, gain the skills to parent more effectively. As Melanie mentioned, they developed a whole curriculum specifically for parents from the NTI resources and really to improve child and family well-being and increase stability for sure. Um, so I think actually I'm gonna jump to questions now because it seems like we had a whole lot of questions. So if um, Don, if you don't mind um, calling out some questions for, for our panelists and maybe we can. Yep. Absolutely. I've got a couple questions that are general, and then I've got a couple for both Arlington and for uh, Washington State. So I'm going to start with the general ones first, if that's okay. Sure. So the one person had asked, um, you know, that the term hard, uh, children from hard places is um, sort of a um, ambiguous term. And so wanted some sort of understanding of how, how do we define children from hard places? How is that used in, in, in an evidence-informed way? Can you speak to that at all? I mean, I, you know, I, I think of children from hard places as children who've experienced early adverse trauma, early adverse experiences. Yeah, so um, absolutely. And the, the term was, um, Karen Purvis used it a lot in her work. Yeah. And um, so the children from hard places, the kids who come into care through foster care, guardianship, um, often, well, I mean, the, something brought them into care, right? Yeah. Something brought them into care. So um, whether it's substance abuse in the family or um, physical, sexual abuse, neglect, um, that's what we're talking about when we talk about hard places. And um, you know, and it's, it is a pretty broad term, but 
kids come into our care for a whole lot of different reasons. Yeah. Um, for our children who come into adoption through international adoption, um, and I, I want to say that in NTI, we really look at the broad spectrum of adoption. So while we're, we've talked a lot about child welfare, um, NTI also addresses international adoption and infant adoption. So um, loss and grief are at the heart of every single adoption. And we have to really acknowledge that. And so I think that I, hopefully yeah. that answers the question. Well, and even children who don't have a, a cognitive memory of their birth parents have still experienced loss. Right. And I think that's important for us to remember, particularly for, for those infant adoption, intercountry adoption who may not know their birth families, they've still experienced a loss. And that's something that we need to help them address in the course of our work. Right. Thanks, Don. Sure. Um, all right. So a question for Arlington. Um, so when you're working on the adoption uh, preparedness plan, um, I don't know if you all have one worker who works with both the children and the licensing families or the adoptive families, but who is the worker? Does the worker actually work with the family on those tasks? How is that work done? And, and if there are two different provider agencies, like one working with the kids and one working with the family or with the parents, who does that work? I hope that question makes sense. Yeah, well, it, it absolutely does. Great question. Um, we have Joyce as our um, one uh, pre-adoption worker here in Arlington. Um, we recently changed um, some things about how uh, caseworkers uh, have cases and we had two, but our other adoption worker is solely working on post-adoption. And so um, Joyce is actually the worker that works with the child and with the family. And yes, she does uh, support the family in developing the task. We have some um, tasks there already, like already on the form that each family can uh, use. Right. Um, and that's actually our, um, what's up right now is actually our um, information sheet. That's the wonderful uh, flyer that Joyce uh, mm -hmm. thought would be helpful to families when she was beginning, when she's beginning her relationship with them so that they have an understanding how different this is gonna be from what they experienced with their foster care worker who was really focused on the child and of course reunification and mm -hmm. uh, working with the birth family. And so this really what we hope sets the stage for the work with the, uh, with the adoptive family or the pre-adopted okay. family during the um, helping them to, to really become um, prepared to adopt, really focusing on their child, their child's needs. And um, I'm, I'm sure Joyce may have something to add on that, but I hope I answered that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if Joyce had something to add about her work with the families. Um, I, I mean, I think you, yeah, I think you covered um, pretty much most of it. So yeah, you know, I work with the families. Um, and so, you know, as I'm meeting with them, really kind of talking through their unique situation, um, their unique family, and we try to work together to, you know, for each of the principals, really kind of think through, you know, where are the areas where, you know, even sometimes they'll say to me, like, we don't know anything about this, like, we want to have resources. And I say, sure, like, let's, we'll add it in the plan, like, this will be something that, you know, we'll make sure that we spend time to talk about, um, because yeah. adoption is, is normally new for them, you know, as well. So it's like we can both kind of go through the process together and really try to provide that support. Great. So given that we know that grief and loss, you know, presents differently over time, if you're providing information on the front end, does the worker who works with families post-adoption have the same access to materials to sort of as a reminder about grief and loss and what this might look like now that the child is at a different you know, the point of development and, and that sort of thing. Yes, um, again, this practice is new for us, but what we yeah. hope is that the family's plan is going to live in their, in their file. And as things come up and they reach out to us in, on the post-adoption end, the post-adoption worker will have uh, this plan in their record to, to refer right. to 
But of course, um, the plan is for the post-adoption worker to completely finish MTI yeah. training as well. Right. And be prepared to have conversations um, along that whole, you know, all the spectrums um, about where their child is developmentally. And uh, fortunately, here in Virginia, we have uh, some wonderful post-adoption uh, support services to refer families to so they can continue to get that support if right. they need uh, a little more intensive uh, support um, for their need. Great. Wonderful. And one quick question just came in as a sort of a follow up to that. Is the plan co-created um, with the family and are there certain areas that you want them to cover, but how they cover it or how they address those tasks are kind of up to them? I'll let Joyce answer that piece. Okay. Well, she is the one actively working on plans with families. Sure. Yeah, so normally what happens is um, when I'm working with the families, one of the first things we do is go over the adoption preparedness flyer. So it really kind of talks about the process, kind of why we're doing it, what we're hoping for, just so they understand it and expect kind of like what's going to happen. Um, and so we have them do a pre-test, which is a short survey to really kind of get a gauge along with our conversations with them about if there are areas um, that maybe they need more, a little more support, or even if they tell me, hey, this is something that we don't really know anything about. Um, and we'll make sure that we're covering everything, but maybe we might add a little bit more support right. in a certain principle if it's something that you know has come up as a concern for them or something that we see when they do the survey that you know, this might be something we want to make sure that we focus on. And we really talk through for each of the guiding principles what the tasks are. So we're both kind of sharing information about you know what's helpful. I talk with the families. Some families might be really good with like, we like videos, we like documentaries. Others mm -hmm. might say like, you know, we want to have articles, we like to have those things. And so we talk through what works best for their family. Um, and what makes the most sense. And then that's how we draft what the plan is going to look like and what resources and support we need to give them. Again, like very specific to their individual family and their needs. Wonderful. And so just a point to everybody, um, Gary did put in the chat, it's called APP template. And you can click on this and then you need to download it to your computer and then open it. So it's not gonna open when you click on it. Um, but thank you guys for sharing the template for um, that preparedness plan. Um, okay, I have a question from Melanie. Um, folks have asked the parent curriculum that was developed, is it for pre-adoptive parents or post or both? And then is it provided face-to-face -face or online? H how, how do parents receive the training? So we developed it for face-to-face -face training. Um, we developed it with... Um, the Alliance for Child Welfare Excellence at the University of Washington. And it's for all. Um, it's for pre-adoptive parents, but it's also very valuable after you've adopted. Um, so it can be used anywhere along the way. It's great information for new staff. Um, right. So our Alliance partners train our staff as well as our caregivers and all adoptive families are eligible to participate. Right as well, but it was right. developed for face-to-face. -face. And is it um, something, Melanie, that other folks could access or could, could view, or is there any way for that to happen? Well, that is something that I saw that in the chat, so I will be asking our University of Washington partners if okay. there's um, the availability, if nothing else, but to, hand, to share our written information. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Okay, great. Thank Melanie, you. would you mind if people contact you if they have questions about it? Oh, that's not a problem at all. My, my okay. contact information is in the last sheet of my the slide. Presentation, my yeah. slide presentation. Okay. And maybe and just, if, you could, if you could drop that in the chat, that'd be great too. I can. Yeah. Thank you. And just to, a reminder to everybody, we are going to be providing you with a copy of the slides and also um, eventually there'll be a recording. Uh, we're recording this, so there will be a recording available of this webinar as well. Um, okay, so I believe those were all the main questions. I think we, we had somebody who reached out to ask, you know, how can we manage grief? And I think one of the things that I would say about that is our training does a wonderful job of really helping to provide strategies for both work with children and youth 
and work with parents around supporting the healing of from uh, loss and grief. And then also, we also um, include self-care strategies for workers because we know this work is really challenging, um, you know, to, to, to ourselves. And so what can you do to manage these stories and, you know, this, the, the, the negative, um, you know, experiences that, that you're living through, through the clients that you serve as well. Um, and I don't know, Lisa, if you want to say anything more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to also mention, um, we have, we have all, um, our webinars that we've done are also online available at our website, adoptionsupport.org backslash NTI. And I think we did, um, did a workshop, a webinar, uh, specifically yep. on loss of grief. And yeah. we also have, yeah, on, yeah. on self-care as well. So lots of great resources on our website, um, as well as our tip sheets. Um, and our tip sheets are sort of aligned with the, with the training and talk about ways to address um, the issues of loss and grief and um, coming, pulling uh, resources right out of our training. Yeah. Okay, is that yep. any? That's all the questions I have right now. Okay, terrific. <laughs> all righty. So um, I want to just let you all know that we have a national directory of NTI pr trained professionals. I actually think I saw a question about this um, a little bit earlier. If um, on completion of the NTI training, you can click on this link, uh, adoptionsupport.org, and go to the national directory and upload your um, certificate of completion and get listed on our directory. This is a great resource for, um, this is a great resource for all of us. So when I am talking with somebody in a state and they're looking for an, uh, an NTI uh, trained professional, somebody who has some, um, has at least a foundational uh, level of competency in adoption, um, I can send them to our, our uh, directory of trained professionals. Um, great to have any of the mental health professionals that you are working with or you know of, um, send them the NTI information. They can take the NTI training on our website or perhaps on a state website if it's available in their state and that's listed on our, our website as well. But um, a really, really great resource. So be sure um, that folks get on that directory. If you have not already accessed NTI and want to do so, um, it's pretty darn easy. Um, we have access on the case learning management system. It's also available on CapLearn, which is a Children's Bureau uh, training platform. And it might also be available in your state. So if you come on to our, our website, adoptionsupport.org backslash NTI. You can learn how to get this on either our website, our training um, learning management system or CapLearn, and it might be available in your state. If you are a leader in a state and want to in, um, integrate NTI into your um, learning management system, please contact myself or Don or Edna and I'll make sure our information, our um, contact information is here. It is our delight and pleasure and our job to get NTI integrated into states, tribes, and territories throughout the United States. And we are happy to help you do that and give you whatever you need in order to do so. We have two more uh, webinars coming up. August 17th, we're gonna be talking about race and identity formation and data analysis. So this is, um, again, how NTI is being integrated and used in day-to-day -day practice. And then September 14th, applying concepts for promoting family stability for child welfare and mental health workers, both. Phew, we got through this all. Are there any more questions? Um, I did want to let folks know that we are going to be, when we send an email out to you tomorrow, we're going to include a link to the adoption preparedness plan. Um, and if you, oh, if you would also please take a moment to complete the survey, it will pop up at the end of the webinar. It is really important for us to get feedback on these so that we can provide webinars for you that really meet your needs. Um, 
And I just want to say a shout out to first all of those of you listening who have taken NTI, completed NTI, or are still in process. We know that it is a time commitment, and we want to thank you for taking the time and let you know that we're rooting for you to complete. Um, if you're in our system right now and you're, uh, you know, have started NTI, uh, we do have an incentive if you if you finish by the end of uh, this month, July 31st. Is it 31st? Yeah, 31st. Um, then you also will get a code to access several of our uh, in-demand webinars for free. So if you're already in our system or you're not and you wanna get in our system and complete it in the next two plus weeks, um, then that's an incentive for you. And of course, if uh, also a thank you to all of the partners who are on our site. We have many of the agencies that we've worked with, both state uh, departments of social services, uh, private organizations like Bethany Christian Services that have uh, partnered with us to provide NTI to their um, workforce. So we, again, as Lisa said, that's our job. We want to make sure that we get NTI out uh, as widely as possible and want to help you in any way we can to make it available to your workforce. So Lisa, you can take yeah. it from here. Okay, thank you. Just want to, one more really humongous thank you to Melanie and Kim and Joyce. Your presentations were fabulous. I think they were just chock full of lots of great information, lots of ideas about how to integrate NTI into your systems and the value that it provides. And sincerely appreciate your participation today and the time it took for you to put um, your, your presentations together. Um, again, NTI is web-based, self-paced and free. Uh, Edna and I have taken to saying free, 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 because people often wonder like, well, what's the catch? There isn't a catch, folks. It's completely free. And we are here to support you in any way we can to um, help you get this into your system, get this working for your staff, for your partners, for the mental health community, um, whatever it takes, we're happy to do it. Here's our contact information. I'll leave this up until we're um, all the way, everybody's um, and left, the, left the forum. And I thank you so much. Thanks to Don, thanks to Gary. Thank you, Edna, I know you're working in the background. Um, sincere appreciation to all of you for um, helping us to put this webinar together. Thanks folks, have a great day. And if you need to give us a shout for sure. <laughs>